In this video from Learn Electrics, we will take a look at part 4 of the wiring regulations to amendment number 2. This is the big brown book and it will be the only book allowed in the exam. The exam is based on your understanding of how to use the book, not on how many pages you can remember. With over 600 pages, you are never going to recall every regulation on every page. Instead, we show you how to approach the exam and each question in a methodical and organised manner. Following this method, you will home in on the answers quickly and easily. If you have the brown book with you, feel free to pause the video as required and follow along. Some of the things we are asked have included how many questions are there on part 4 and is there an easy way to find answers quickly? How do I know the question is about part 4 and how do I use the contents pages? You need to understand the regs book, how it's laid out and how it is designed to help you. Page 3 is the main contents page. It lists all the parts of the book and gives some very brief information about each part. This is my go-to page when I want answers. You will notice that part 4 comprises five chapters. And it also tells us that part 4 has its own contents page on page 59. So let's go there now. This is page 59, the part 4 contents page, and it gives us much more information than page 3. This allows us to start homing in on the answers, as you will see. And if you want even more detail, which we do, each chapter also has its own contents page too. Here is a list of the page numbers for each of the chapter contents pages. Learn to find these pages quickly. They really are your best friend in the exam. They're not there for show. They are there to help you. So use them. A little bit about part four and the amendment two exam now. Part four is a big section in the exam. Expect 14 or 15 questions on part four. That's about 25% of the exam questions. You really must know how to answer questions on part four. What is part four about? Safety. And this table gives a brief description of the scope of each chapter. Knowing what each chapter is about is going to help in finding answers quickly. We can start with chapter 41 on page 61. This chapter is about protection from electric shock. You must know the difference between basic protection and fault protection. If you don't know the difference, if you're unsure, then invest the time in yourself and find out more. Read the regs book around page 63. You need to know. Listed here are the main things to consider. Pause the video and spend a few seconds making sure that you understand. We can start with a question on this. The question asks, when considering fault protection and protective earthing, simultaneously accessible exposed conductive parts shall be connected to the same earthing system and then four possible answers to complete the sentence. Only one answer is most appropriate for this question. Which one is it? Regulation 411.3 on page 63 is about fault protection. We've just been looking at that page. And regulation 411.3.1.1 as shown below gives us the answer as shown underlined. We should choose answer D. The regulations say that we can use any of the listed connection types. Staying with chapter 41, another big section for exam questions is ZS. Knowing what the maximum permitted ZS is for different circuits and different fuses or breakers is so very fundamental to our trade and this is reflected by having four or five questions in the exam just on ZS. There will always be several questions on ZS in every exam and you need to know how to answer them. The Wiring Regulations book gives tabulated ZS values. And tabulated means that they've come from the tables in the brown book. Tabulated values are different to the measured values that are given in the on-site guide. In the exam, use the tabulated values that are given in the brown Amendment 2 Wiring Regulations book. 
Understanding this next bit is important to understanding which table you should be using to answer questions. Regulation 411.3.2.2 on page 64 tells us that to find the maximum permitted disconnection time for a circuit, use table 41.1 on page 65 if it is a final circuit and the circuit has a rated current not exceeding 63 amps with one or more socket outlets and 32 amps if the circuit is supplying only fixed connected equipment. This is table 41.1 on page 65. For most domestic circuits, we will be using the range where U0 is greater than 120 volts and not more than 230 volts nominal and AC. In the UK, we work on 230 volts nominal. We base all our calculations on this, even if the actual voltage that we measure is 240 volts. Which means that for a TN system, TNCS or TNS, this is a disconnection time not exceeding 0 0.4 seconds. And for a TT system, 0 0.2 seconds. All will become clear very soon. But what if regulation 411.3.2.2 and table 41.1 do not apply? Just below the table, shown here, are two very important regulations. They tell us some different numbers of seconds to use for disconnection times. Pause the video and make sure that you understand the differences. You must remember these rules. These are easy questions to get right and easy to get wrong too. On pages 67 to 69 are three tables that look the same but are so very different. You must use the correct table to find the right answer. Take a moment to become familiar with what the tables tell us. The disconnection times are different for each table. Table 41.2 on page 67 is for fuses and only for those circuits that require a 0 0.4 second disconnection time. For domestic circuits, this will normally imply final circuits. And here on page 69 is table 41.4. Again, this is for fuses, but now for disconnection times of 5 seconds and for distribution circuits. Learn to tell the difference between them. And now page 68 and table 41.3. This table is for use on both final and distribution circuits requiring a disconnection time of 0 0.4 seconds and 5 seconds. It is for circuit breakers, MCBs to BSEN 60898 and RCBOs to BSEN 61009-1. And each of the three types, B, C and D, are listed with their own range of ZS values. This table is not to be used for fuses. So let's have an exam style question on these tables. What is the maximum tabulated ZS value for a 20 amp BS3036 fuse in a 230 volt domestic final circuit? BS3036 is a fuse, so the answer could be in table 41.2 or table 41.4. The question states domestic final circuit, so this must be a 0 0.4 second disconnection time. Therefore, the answer must be in table 41.2 on page 67. Find BS3036 fuses on page 67. Find the entry for 20 amps in the table and read off the maximum ZS below it. The answer we choose should be answer B, 1.68 ohms. Another question on ZS values. A distribution circuit with a maximum permitted disconnection time of 5 seconds is protected by a 63 amp BS88-2 fuse. The maximum tabulated ZS value for this circuit is what? The protective device is a fuse and it has a 5 second disconnection time, all given in the question. So the answer must be in table 41.4 on page 69. Here is table 41.4 for 5 second disconnection times. Find the correct section for BS88-2 fuses and then find 63 amps in the range and read off the ZS value below it. 
Our choice should be answer D, 0 0.78 ohms. Moving on, chapter 42 is about protection against thermal effects. Chapter 42 has a contents list on page 84. This chapter will cover things such as fire caused by electrical equipment, how to protect escape routes in the event of a fire, how to prevent stored material catching fire from electrical equipment and other thermal effects in addition to fire such as smoke and heat generation. Try this question on chapter 42. Arcs and sparks may be emitted from a piece of fixed equipment and it has been totally enclosed in arc resistant material. The arc resistant material shall be of low ignitability and in accordance with what? Looking at the contents list on page 84, this is protection against fire caused by electrical equipment. And it tells us to look at regulation 421. There are only two pages to scan through for regulation 421. The answer is here somewhere. Regulation 421.1.3 on page 85 holds the answer. The arc resistant material must be in accordance with BSEN ISO 11925-2. So choose answer C. And another exam question on chapter 42. The regulations state that in protected escape routes, the use of electrical equipment containing flammable liquids, something. It is clear from the question that this is to do with safety and with thermal effects, fire. Find chapter 42 contents on page 84. Find protected escape routes as this is mentioned in the question. And the contents page indicates regulation 422. Find 422.2 on page 86. Now find 422.2.3 on page 87. And there is the answer. Choose answer B. It is not permitted. Use the contents pages and gradually work your way into the answer. The question always gives you enough clues to work out where the answer is. Looking at chapter 43 now, this is about protection against overcurrents. It's about choosing the correct conductors so that they will not be damaged by overcurrents. After all, it's easier to change a fuse than it is to rewire the house. A typical exam question might ask, when considering protection against overload current and coordination between conductors and overload protected devices, the rating IN of a semi-enclosed fuse to BS3036 should not exceed the current carrying capacity, IZ, of the cable times what factor? And you have to find the number. Let's do this from page 3 from the beginning. Page 3 is the main contents page and we know that safety is part 4. We are considering safety of the installation in this case. Chapter 43 is protection against overcurrent. The book directs us to page 93. In fact, we want the opposite page, page 92 and chapter 43 contents. Section 433 says protection against overcurrent. Then find the entry 433.1 which says coordination between conductors and overload protective devices. That is pretty much what the question is asking. So let's find that now. Looking on page 95, we will find regulation 433.1.202. It tells us that IN, the fuse rating, should not exceed 0 0.725 times IZ, the conductor's current carrying capacity. We should select answer B, 0 0.725. Now look at chapter 44, electromagnetic disturbances. Think of lightning storms and other sources of voltage and electromagnetic disturbances. How can we protect installations from the effects of these voltage disturbances that are happening in the vicinity of the installation? Look at page 101, chapter 44, contents page. We can see section 443, protection against transient overvoltages of atmospheric origin. This implies lightning storms. Nothing can protect an installation from a direct strike, 
but we can protect installations in the near vicinity from these voltage disturbances, which can be significant. The last thing we want is a lightning strike a few miles away and the drill in your hand bursting into flames. This exam style question is about just that. When classifying the rated impulse voltages of equipment that is subjected to transient over voltages of atmospheric origin, the rated impulse voltage UW of category 3 230 volt equipment is what? If we start at page 3, this will direct us to page 102. And we need to look at page 101, chapter 44, contents page. Here we will find section 443, transient voltages of atmospheric origin, just as the question is asking. And there is 443.6, classification of rated impulse voltages. Again, words from the question. We will find our answer on page 108 and table 443.2. How do we use this table? Follow the question, find the category 3 column, then look for the row that indicates 230 volts. Where the column and row meet is the first part of our answer, the number 4. Now look at the top of the table. It tells you the voltage range for the table. It is telling us that all the answers are in kilovolts, thousands of volts. Our answer then is answer B, 4 kilovolts. There is no chapter 45, so we are straight on to chapter 46, isolation and switching. How to turn the electricity off safely. Try this question. The wiring regulations state that every circuit shall be provided with isolation means for all live conductors, except as detailed in regulation something and you have to find which of the four possible answers completes the sentence. Looking for each of the four answers in the book will not help. Instead, you are looking for a regulation that is about isolation, and that includes a reference to one of the four possible answers. If we look at page 124, the contents page for chapter 46, we will see that section 462 is about isolation. And 462.2 states that, Every circuit shall be provided with isolation means for all live conductors except as detailed in regulation 461.2. There is our answer, as detailed in regulation 461.2. Answer D. I hope you found this video useful and learnt something from it. Follow the clues that are given in each question. There should always be enough information to get you to within a few pages of the answer. Remember that part 4 is all about safety, about keeping persons and livestock safe, about reducing the risk of fire and protecting property, protecting cables from overcurrents, reducing the harmful effects of voltage disturbances and isolation and switching. And do remember to use the contents pages, they are there to help you. Thank you for watching, it's very much appreciated. Please subscribe to our channel to get access to all of our videos and remember to click on notify to be sure of not missing our next video. And you'll find even more information, videos and help on our website at learnelectrics.com. And don't forget that you can also type in Learn Electrics, all one word, into the YouTube search bar to go directly to our channel at any time from any computer. We are constantly adding new videos to our channel, don't miss the next one. And once again, thank you for watching and we hope to see you again very soon.